In this first video for normal fractions grade 8, we're going to have a look at equivalent fractions, improper fractions and comparing fractions. On this number line, we only have integers indicated. We however know that in between all these integers, there are many different options of other values, which we call fractions. Fractions can be written as normal fractions and decimal fractions. When we work with normal fractions, you should know that any normal fraction is written in the form a over b, where a and b are both integers, and b can never be equal to zero. Otherwise, this fraction will be undefined. In such a fraction, the bottom value is called the denominator, and the top value is the numerator. Fractions can be interpreted as follows. If we have the fraction 3 over 4, the denominator of 4 tells us that every unit will be divided into 4 equal parts. The numerator then tells us how many of these parts we are using, and the 3 in our fraction then says 3 of these quarters will indicate our value. Or you can say that 3 units, the numerator, will be divided into 4 equal parts, the denominator. So you will focus on 3 full units and divide this into 4 equal parts. One of these parts that have the same size will then represent 3 quarters. A very important concept when working with normal fractions is equivalent fractions. These are fractions that look different but have the same value. For example, when you have a fraction where the denominator has now changed to 12, it is important for you to remember that these fractions have to have the same value. And this is done by repeating the same calculation that was done in the denominator, which is times by 3, in the numerator. And that will give us a numerator of 9. Clearly, there is an infinite number of equivalent fractions, and these are only a few examples. Fractions are ratios, and that is why it's important to remember that you can only multiply and divide to form equivalent fractions. Improper fractions are fractions where the numerator is bigger than the denominator. A number like this consists of an integer part and a fraction part. Example 1. Rewrite the following as mixed numbers. Our first fraction is 17 over 4, and this means we want to form groups of 4. If we think about the multiples of 4, we have 4, 8, 12 and 16 which means we can form four complete groups of four, and that means four integers. From the original 17 in the numerator, we've now used 16, which means only a fraction is left over, and that fraction is one quarter. In number two, we now have a negative value. The whole value is negative, and that means that the minus is simply written in front and the rest of the steps stay the same. This time we're working with the multiples of 5, which will give us 5, 10, 15, 20, which means we once again have four complete groups of 5. This means that we've used 20 of the original 24 parts and therefore we have four fifths left over. And here we now have mixed numbers that consist of integers as well as fractions. Example 2. Rewrite the following as an improper fraction. In this case, we now have a mixed number that consists of an integer as well as fractions. The integer of 3 indicates that 3 complete groups of 7 can be made. 3 times 7 is 21, and along with this 21, we also have the extra 2 in the numerator, and this means that in total we have 23 
sevenths. If you want to compare fractions or order them in ascending or descending order, you need to rewrite all of them in equivalent fractions that have the same denominator. Once that is done, you can simply compare the numerators to make your conclusion. Example 3. Place the following in ascending order. Here we are given 5 values, of which 2 are negative values. I'm going to compare these two negative values on their own because we already know that negative values are smaller than positive values. So I'm going to start off by writing two equivalent fractions for these negative values and these equivalent fractions should have the same denominator and this denominator will be their lowest common multiple which is 77. And to form these equivalent fractions the same calculation that was done in the denominator should be repeated in the numerator so we will have minus 49. For the second negative fraction the denominator is multiplied by 11 which should then be repeated in the numerator to get negative 55. And now that the denominators are the same I can focus only on the two numerators and decide which one of these two is the smaller one. When it comes to negative values on the number line you need to remember that the more negative the value is, the more to the left on the number line the number is, and that means the smaller the number is. That means the smallest of the two negative fractions I have is minus 55 over 77, and then we have minus 49 over 77. Next, we need to order the three positive values. And the first of these three is a mixed number. Please remember to always do calculations with improper fractions. So when you have a mixed fraction like one and a third, your first step is to rewrite it as an improper fraction. And here that will be four over three. So now we have four over three, eight over nine, and five over six to compare. And that means my common denominator will be 18. So the first fraction, 3, is multiplied by 6 to get 18. And this is repeated in the numerator to get 24. 8 over 9, the denominator is doubled. And that is repeated in the numerator. And lastly, I need to multiply 6 by 3 and repeat in the numerator. Now I can compare the three numerators of 24, 16 and 15 and because I'm writing in ascending order the smallest one will come first and that is 15 over 18. Next up we have 16 over 18 and lastly 24 over 18. It is important to always write your final answer in terms of the originally given fractions.